Once again, a very warm welcome to everybody to the ITIL Practitioner Train the Trainer webinar. Today we'll be looking, as the title already says, at ITIL Practitioner and help you get ready to be able to deliver the ITIL Practitioner course. Okay, so if we look at who's uh, going to be on the call today presenting, uh, first of all, you're look, listening to me at the moment. My name is Frank Prombach, for those who don't know me yet. Uh, I'm the Global Manager for Quinn Solutions. And in a minute or two, I'll be introducing Claudine Coors, a consultant lead trainer who will take you through the content of the material. Just for those who don't know us yet, because regularly we have new people joining us on these sessions, a quick introduction of Quint. Uh, those who know us know this uh, already, but um, Quint has been established in 1992 in Amsterdam and as a management consulting firm, completely independent, so we're not part of one of the very big uh, consulting organizations, but more a boutique firm. Worldwide, over 250 consultants with more than 50 million uh, US dollars annual revenue. We're represented in at least 49 countries at this moment. We're also through our Quinn Solutions partner network. We have a wide stretch into the world. And if you look at our core competences uh, from a consulting uh, background, you see areas like sourcing, architecture, governance, lean, and definitely last but not least, IT service management. Then um, one of the things, one of the achievements I'd like to mention is that uh, the International Association of Outsourcing Professionals has awarded Quint as the best outsourcing professionals in the world, and the best advisor in the world, I should say. And this is not the first time, but actually it's the third year in a row. And with that, we leave all these big consulting firms behind us because we uh, have such high customer value rating there. Look at service management and lean IT. We're recognized as a thought leader around the world in these areas. And therefore, you also see the logo of the Lean IT Association, of which Quint is uh, one of the founding organizations. And actually, the whole IP and the background is all built upon the Quint background built from uh, the consulting uh, knowledge and expertise in there. So how does Quint empower businesses? Actually through three, three areas, consulting, academy and solutions. Consulting, as we already discussed, Quint is a consulting organization, so we help bring about change in organizations, which is always IT related, or, uh, and there are IT related challenges these organizations have. Then academy is the training part of Quint that supports these changes and actually helps the organizations to be able to bring about the change uh, afterwards themselves. So we go in, we change, and we leave. Whereas if you see the big consulting firms stay for very long periods with large numbers of consultants. And Quinn Solutions, uh, hosting the session for you today, we have smart solutions for training providers in which we offer a full one-stop shopping solution with all kinds of services. And what kind of services do we offer you? We go to the next one, we'll see that uh, our package of services is all round. So that means we have courseware, and obviously from today we'll be looking at, uh, at that as well, in this case for Idle Practitioner. We offer e-learning, a wide range of e-learning. We have trainers. Uh, in some cases, our partners either don't have a trainer for a new area which they're opening up to the market, or all their trainers are occupied and they need additional trainers so they can call on us. And our trainers are also consultants, so they bring in a lot of experience from the field. Then we offer exam and accreditation service, so we can support you to deliver exams to your uh, candidates. Through operational excellence, we try to make the process as easy and as, as smooth as possible for you. They're saving money for you on the whole back office area. And I think very important is also that our uh, portfolio is based upon the expertise that we have within our consulting area. This also makes us unique because uh, we are not a publishing house that has as many courses as possible. So there will be courses that you won't find with us. Let's say for instance, a course about software hacking or something like that. That is not an expertise within our consulting, so you won't find that. Whereas things like IT service management or Lean or Agile are, and th those are the areas we will focus on. Then, how do we stand out from the crowd? Uh, as I said, the unique combination of consulting and learning makes us a very unique in this market and in this world. The quality that we aim through the focus that we have, 
and our global presence. These factors make us quite unique and uh, make us stand out in the crowd. So not wanting to take too much of your time and bore you with all these kind of details, but interesting enough to know, should you want to know more, then we have to talk to you. Uh, here are my details. After the session, uh, shortly you will receive a follow-up email giving you some more information how you can get in touch with us if you're not yet a solutions partner and you would like to be that. So let's go into the operational side of today's session before I hand over to, uh, to Claudine. All participants will be on mute today. That is simply to make the session uh, understandable and pleasant. Obviously, we understand that you may have questions and uh, we would like you to uh, enter your questions into the Q&A box. Also, if you should have any technical issues, then please feel free to put them in there. Looking at the questions, what we will do is we'll save up the questions and uh, in the middle of the session today, the session is planned to be two hours, so halfway the session, so that will be uh, around about on the hour, we will have a 10 minute break. And uh, probably just before we go into the break, we will go over the questions that have come in up to that moment, so that you don't have to wait until the end of the session to get an answer for the relevant things that we've covered until then. Same thing we'll do at the end is go over the questions from the second part of the session before we end. The session is recorded and will be available for later viewing. And uh, through the link that you will get in the follow-up mail, you will able to go, be able to go to the session and you will also find other sessions from previous webinars that we've hosted that you can also go in and listen to if you would find them interesting for you. Okay, now we go over to the content. Claudine is the person who's going to uh, take you through the whole training. Claudine is a consultant and lead trainer with a whole lot of experience in IT and IT service management. Claudine is a consultant with Quint, but also has had her own training organization and is a trainer too. And Claudine is uh, also responsible for a big part of the content of what you'll be seeing today and is one of the developers of the material that you'll be looking at today. And her areas of expertise, as you can see, are IT service management, governance, risk management, and agile. So all very relevant to what we'll be looking into today. So thank you for now. I'll be back later on. And for now, I'd like to hand over to Claudine. Uh, thanks, Frank. Um... Well, welcome everybody. I saw some uh, names I, I know from uh, from other uh, moments in time. Nice, you took the time to be with us today. Uh, this is the official launch date of us showing our uh, ITIL partition material to you. Uh, it will be available uh, for if you want to start studying and start uh, preparing yourself for the exam uh, up from next week. Uh, Frank is going to put on the partner portal also some of the material we go through uh, I will explain some of the things, um, so uh, you can start uh, discussing from today. Uh, for those who have not been in the webinar or have not been uh, here, I will uh, explain a little bit about uh, the I2 partitioner. Uh, some of uh, the, the questions I had, there was, okay, Tadi, but this I2 partition, is that not something similar like we had in version 2? Uh, no, it's not the same as we had in uh, version 2. Actually, in version two, we had practitioners go into detail about uh, a certain subject, so like uh, incident management or change management or service desk. But this practitioner doesn't go into detail of the ITO books, the, the, the five life cycles, but it actually make us adapt and adopt the ITO framework in your organization. So the students who will doing this course, and we're coming back to that of who was the potential students, uh, would like to implement the ITIL framework and has, ha, haven't not been able to do that or want the, themselves prepared to do it and to implement, uh, to make it work. So how do you deal with difficult managers, difficult co-workers who, who don't want to change or how do you communicate, what kind of message do you use? So um, the reason about uh, behind ITIL practitioner. The objectives of this, of the agenda of this train the trainer, uh, a little bit about the Axelas books and the key facts of the course, the syllabus of Axelas, which uh, this gives us an idea about what is the requirements uh, of the exam, what do the Axelas ask for their exam, uh, then a little bit about the exam and the case study of the exam, the requirements for the trainer, our co course approach, 
uh, and the modules. So I will go uh, one by one of the modules. It says eight modules. Uh, in fact, there are ten, but the first is in uh, and the last one is the exam preparation. So that's why I put eight there. Um, so let's go. This is the official uh, guidance publication. Um, I thought it was not yet available, but one of the previous uh, web webinar uh, attendees said that they already ordered it, so that's great. So you can option on already order it. Please do so uh, for yourself, for your study, and for the future um, case of your students. Uh, it can be ordered from TSO. Uh, the official guidance publication, this one, this book contains also a toolkit. That means there are four major chapters in the book. We will go into that later. And at the end of the book, there will be some templates. And these templates will, for example, give you an idea like how do you do a sponsor diagram or stakeholder analysis or a benefit realization mapping, or uh, uh, how do you do a format of a, uh, KPIs, etc. So there is some kind of templates in the book. And all these templates will be handled in our course material. Uh, the students will work with that uh, template, they will have to fill it in and use it. And that's one of the main things also in this course, that 20% uh, will be only lectures. So from the 10 modules I've told you, only three and a half will be lecturing. And that would be like uh, not so many slides and not so many time on the lecture. It will be more working and doing exercises and assignments. So that's the nice thing of this course. It's a two-day course. But uh, we recommend, and we, I'll come to that later, that you will um, do the exam within the 10 days following up of the course. Of course, you uh, as a trainer and in your training company, you are able to decide by yourself, but you will find uh, that it's difficult for the students and it's a tight schedule to put in an exam in this just two days as well. Uh, some of the, we went to London, and in London we, were, we work with Axelos, with other ATOs, to make sure that everything that uh, we have seen in the material is, and all the comments and the review comments are, are put in the material. And one of the questions also was, okay, but uh, if I, can I offer it in five days, this training? Because uh, you can do that. You can say, okay, I do three days foundation, and then two days, uh, practitioner, uh, but there are some advantages and disadvantages of that. Uh, for first of all, um, depends on the level of your students, what kind of students do you have, do they have already practical business experience in implementing processes and ITIL framework parts or not, are they relatively uh, in a green field and is it new for them, that might be a little bit of a challenge. So it's up to you if you want to offer them in five days closely to the foundation or do it later on as a two-day course. It's not, uh, and I'll come to that later, it's not uh, replacing any of the capabilities or life cycle courses. It is additional. It actually helps and supports implementing life cycle capability. Uh, it's a practical approach to ITIL. Uh, it has three credits. It focuses on nine guiding principles. Uh, this night in principle will be a central thing in the course. We come to that later. Uh, every module uh, refers to these guiding principles and should be used uh, so the students have an idea about the guiding principles. It draws on the life cycle stage of uh, the CSI. In the CI, CSI book, we have the life cycle stage of what is our mission, where do you want to go, where are you now, how do we get there, did we arrive, and how we keep the momentum. These phases of the life cycle stages will be uh, part of uh, the, this training as well, but putting it into practice. So how do you define the mission and the vision? How do you, if you start implementing ITIL, uh, it's not, oh, I want to implement the incident, I want to implement problem, I want to implement changes. No, we have to show the students there's a reason why and what are you going to solve in your organization. Do you want to have more stability or operational continuity? Or do you want to have quicker uh, products on the market? What is a final goal? And, and that's one of the guiding principles also. So the, that's, for example, the first step that I have to work with it. Understand uh, what drives this change, what drives new services. Uh, I promise you the ITO scheme. Uh, this is the ITO scheme, is how it is drawn up. The, 
with certification. The foundation is the first level, and next to it, you see the ITO practitioner. Uh, is it a prerequisite for the intermediate and life cycle or the capabilities? No, it's not. Uh, you can do it parallel. You can decide not to do it. You can dec decide to do it part of your uh, ITO expert. So you can do something, uh, for example, life cycle capabilities, some, some courses there, complemented with the protection before you go to the milk. Uh, it's up, up to every student to decide to do that. Uh, how does Axelos uh, promote it? They see it like this. So you see here uh, the five life cycles in the purple circle. Foundation is the first step. So you have an idea about the concepts and the description and everything about ITIL. And then you have the capability life cycle models and practitioners putting it into practice, the adapt and adopt of ITIL. So that's why it's uh, a next step after ITA Foundation uh, and parallel uh, for the capability and life cycle models. This is how it fits in. Uh, about the ITA practitioner, it gives a gu uh, practical guidance and skills. Uh, I didn't talk about skills yet, the practical guidance I told you about, but the skills is what skills do you need if you uh, want to adapt and adopt ITO in your organization? You will need to understand uh, the context. You will need to understand uh, the importance of or organizing this change in organizations. So how do you handle resistance if there are any? How do you do it with communication? And this uh, actually asks uh, different skills of some people to be able to apply them. Um, and this course actually is developed so that the students uh, work on this skill. So they have to do presentations, they have to do plans, they have to do an assessment. They even have to do an elevator pitch. So explain in uh, two minutes why you want to do it and what is your driver to the change. Um, drawing on the uh, CSI approach, as I mentioned to you, uh, we will follow the nine guiding principles. Uh, it's a sound beginning of developing the key skills, as I told you. And we will learn uh, how it works with other uh, practices like DevOps, uh, Lean, Agile, etc. We It will not be part of the course to actually understand what is DevOps and Lean and Agile and how it works together. But uh, we know that a lot of practitioners, a lot of people implementing ITO, they come up with this. Now they, they, in the real life, they see that, okay, development is done in some Agile teams and we are doing value stream uh, analysis and we have the teams working more together, closer to DevOps and, and operation in, in DevOps team. So how does it work? So you will have to put some time also with the students to put it into uh, perspective and understand each other. What does it cover? Uh, the CSI approach, it covers uh, three crucial, crucial areas, the continuous service improvement, the organization so change management, measurement metrics, and communication. These are also four chapters in the book, the TSO book. And besides the, the, the introduction where they talk about what is a service and, and the guiding principles, these are the other four chapters in the book. And the last chapter is the toolkit with all the uh, templates, collection of worksheets and assessments, etc. So, um, the importance of adapt and adopt, I explained to you the focus on continuous service improvement, knowing where to start. And one of the key points I put in the training as well is creating a journey plan. And that is why um, we decided to do uh, the training based on a real case or uh, invented case, of course, but a, a case where uh, this company has a journey. So they have a new service, they have a service that's interrupted, they have a modification of the current service they want to improve. So uh, it's actually based on the case study, which the people have to uh, uh, work together with. That's the journey plan Axelos wants the students to take through. In their exam, they have also a case study as crucial on cars. I will come back on that later. Uh, we will also use that in our uh, courseware. Uh, so they have several cases to learn to, to create this journey plan. Okay, the, the, the exam. Uh, I saw that for some of you are already very experienced uh, trainers, so they know everything about Bloom's level. So this is nothing new to you. The ITO practitioner exam uh, 
will be assessed using Bloom Level 2 and to 4. And it's a little bit different than Foundation, which is at Bloom Level 1, 2, and sometimes 3, but it doesn't go already to 4. Um, so just for the people who don't know what's the Bloom Level, if you see Bloom Level 2, then you, you will see words like describe or explain, relatively in, uh, uh, questions that could be answered understanding, uh, if you have an understanding of the concept and the processes, it's not compl complex to answer this question. Of course, if you have studied and understand that. Bloom level 3 is really applying in a given situation. Uh, you can use a procedure, so you have to define or work out or uh, do a comparison. That's Bloom level 3. And Bloom level 4 will be analyzed or assessed or used or determined. And it's, uh, you have to break in the material into parts and determine how parts relate to one another. So maybe you have uh, six, uh, that could be one of the questions in the exam. You have six, questions, six KPIs, and then they will ask you, okay, which uh, is the best KPI set? So they will say one, two, four, and five, one, two, three, and four, one, two, five, and six. You know, these kind of questions in the excellence exams. And then you have to find out which is the best one. So it's kind of a bloom level. For. I have to tell you, the exam is not so easy. Uh, I did it myself in London. Uh, we were there with uh, 15 representatives of ADOS, and it was uh, hard. It was a difficult exam. Uh, maybe because it's a new style as well, but you have different... We ha you have one hour and 45 minutes, and um, few people uh, ended up before one and a half hours. So. A little bit about the exam. Now I've talked about the exam. These are the six learning outcomes Axel has defined. So the first one is be able to use IT service management concepts that are an important driver for continuous service improvement. Be able to apply the IT service management guiding principles in a real world context and be able to apply the, the continuous service improvement approach to manage improvements in a given organization and context. So this together gives 30% of the exam. There are six multiple choice questions. Uh, and as I told you, we were working with scenarios. Uh, the first scenario will be a small kind of change, and, and the big uh, one scenario will be a large change. So a large change could be uh, we, we want to have a complete new service, for example, Easy Journey Airways. The, the case study we will be using uh, in our course uh, will be a new Wi-Fi on board of the airplane. So it's a completely large change. And the small change could be, OK, I want to improve the baggage in system, the baggage claim system, for example. So, and in the cruise along cars, can also they have different kind of scenarios, also large changes and small changes. Later on, I will go into detail. Now, uh, I want to switch to the uh, partition exam. Here you see it. Uh, I have it open. This will be made available by you, uh, by Frank, on our uh, port partner portal. So you can see this. Uh, the, ex the syllabus of the exam. Here you see in the first one, be able to use IT service management. So you see here, concepts of adapt and adopt when using IT in a given context. You have here the number of the book, the chapter of the book. What is the kind of question that will be uh, related to this one, the Bloom Level 3? There will be a question about analyzing the ports of each element of a de definition of a service, so customer value, outcome, cost, and risk. Looks like a foundation question. Does when you you will see the exam, it, the question is a little bit difficult, more difficult than that. It's a Bloom level four actually. Then uh, here you see the guiding principles. There will be always a question about the guiding principles. Uh, it focuses on value, experience, start where you are, holistic. All these uh, given uh, guiding principles will have a question in the exam. Go a little more down. Uh, together with this third one, separating these three, we'll have uh, six multiple choice questions. So this goes at purpose and main output of steps of the CSI approach. Use the CSI approach tools and techniques. So you have one of the here you have the first one, the orientation worksheet, a benefit relation uh, realization review template, a CSI register. These are templates in the toolkit. Uh, the students in our course material will have to fill this in for the easy uh, uh, journey airways case. So they will have to work with that. 
Uh, the, the last one in three is apply the CSI approach to a given context, including a holistic view of the guiding principles and how these three critical competencies contribute to an improvement. So communication metrics, OCM. You see this is a holistic view of the whole training. So it doesn't only go for a little part of uh, the courseware material or the content of the book. It goes all concepts together in one uh, question. Uh, that makes it more difficult to answer these kind of questions. Later on, I will show you two or three exam questions so you have an idea before starting studying to know it. We will have uh, mock exams available for you as well on the partner portal so you can prepare yourself for the final exam. Uh, here we see four. I will not go into detail all of them. I uh, will do less time to do that. Uh, but it will be made available for you, but just to have an idea, this is uh, the first uh, part that goes into the chapter of metrics and measurements. So uh, KPI, CSFs, um, you here see uh, the balance between four categories. We go into detail later in the modules. You will see that Axel's in the book defines four categories of measuring uh, KPIs. Uh, Defining current state in a given context. Well, this together gives you eight questions and will be 20% of the exam weight. And then we go uh, to the communication part chapter. Now you see also five, uh, par five subjects or assessment criteria which will be used. So what's explain what's communication principles, what is good communication, here a little bit about tools and techniques, as I told you about the toolkit at the end of the book. So you have here the workshop and meeting, action plan and meeting notes. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned to you and if you already knew, but the exam is an open book exam. Yes, that's a relief. That's what I thought. Still difficult because you're uh, going back and forth in the whole book. Sometimes you don't know where is the information, where can I find it. You cannot make any notes in your book. Books have to be off. Uh, completely clean and virgin, so uh, yeah, Frank will explain to you later on, but uh, if you uh, want to do the training, you, you have some alternatives, either you make sure your students don't write in the books, or you take your own books, and when you the students have to do the exam, you take away all the books from them, and you give them a new uh, version they take back to you for the next training. So what I did in London is we, they gave us a book to work with, and uh, once we have to do an exam, we have to put everything down and they give us a new book to do the exam. Uh, so they were very strict on that. But it's an open book. So uh, then the sixth, the last one, it goes to the organizational change management. Uh, here is also six multiple choice questions. Ex uh, explain the role and impact of organizational change management, sense of urgency, stakeholder sponsors. Then you see here again, huh, the some of the toolkits, you see every point three is about the toolkits. Here you see also chapter seven. So chapter seven is about the toolkit actually. Sponsor diagram, stakeholder analysis, mapping, and RACI charts. And that gives us uh, 40 multiple choice questions and you have to answer that in one hour and 45 minutes. So this is a little bit about the uh, exam syllabus. Why do I show you? Um, because uh, it's important to know about the exam and the syllabus and the things they have to know. You can use it with your students if they say, okay, I have to study for this, how do I study? You can say, okay, take the syllabus, exam syllabus, and try to understand what's written in the syllabus. If you have an answer, if you can find it, if you know how to use it, and if you do, you have a summary of your uh, exam. Uh, our course material is more or less uh, related to this order of the syllabus, but what we do do, if you see here, three, the CSI approach to manage improvements in a given context, that will be our um, central spine to say so through, through during the two-day course. So every step of the CSI will be the journey that the students are taking. So the first step will be, what is the mission? Second step is, uh, uh, where do we want to go? Third, where are we now? So these steps will be, will be the assignments and the exercises in the course using, and then we go, the, the rest of the material. 
So that's how it's organized in the, uh, in, uh, the course, but I will come to later uh, on that. But it's important to tell you because that's the relation between the syllabus and our course material. Uh, well, a little resume of what I was telling you about. Recommend to take the exam within 10 days. Um, you have the time uh, now to do the exam, uh, I think starting at the end of this month, probably in February more. No, so, sorry, in February to the exam with uh, Axelos. Um, it will be free of charges for you if you do it before the end of April. Okay, it's open book, uh, 65 pass rates. One of the questions was if you have to have an uh, elevated pass rate as an instructor. No, it's not necessary. 75 is sufficient to uh, teach this train. The scenario exam, cruise along cars. This has to do with uh, self-driving cars of self uh, cars that don't need a, a driver to be there. So it has to be with a software company. It has to be with a car company, university, and of course, uh, and Department of Transportation, a government company. And all these are together working at cars that drive without a driver or self-driving cars. Um, it's a two pages case study that will be available to the students before. So during the course, the students will have this scenario. You can work with them. You can prepare them for that. So the, 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 ha the half of the second day of the course is especially for working with them through this scenario, make them understand and live the scenario so they will be able to answer questions in the exam. Then something about the trainer requirements. Um, you have to have a minimum of three year practical experience in IT service management. Uh, uh, and you say, okay, why is that? Because 80% of this course will be practical. You have to guide the students through. You have to be able to help them uh, giving answers to the questions, facilitate the process, and it's less lecturing. So because there is le less lecturing, it's important that you can uh, have some examples of the real life you can share with your students so they learn from your experience and also that you know what they're going through when they're doing the exercises. So how to guide them through or facilitate them through. It's uh, necessary, of course, to have the practitioner certificate. You have to demonstrate the ability to manage, run, and deliver the training course. Of course, experience of delivering classroom-based training. Uh, registered under a specific ATO, uh, like Quint. Hold a certificate for a minimum of 12 credits in the IT examination program. That can be for that's at least the five of foundation and um, partition together. And then seven additional credits from uh, the life cycle capability or mark. And you have to have the ITIL con uh, continuous service improvement certification, so life cycle CSI. If you do not have it yet, uh, you will be able to do this in this, this whole year, but at the end of the year you have to show the certificate of the CSI is necessary prerequisite to uh, teach. How does our course look like? Uh, we have an instructor package, which includes uh, an uh, instructor guide, an e-book, uh, presentation pack, and we have also uh, uh, e-learning from Axelos, the self-study e-learning of the book, that will prepare you as a trainer to self-study the book uh, they have speaking points with the slides in the instructor guide. Um, every module has an instructor guide. There will be uh, information, tips and tricks to the student, to the instructor, sorry, to guide them through the assignments. And we have a participant handbook. The participant handbook uh, has a glossary in terms, answers uh, to exercises, a mock exam uh, uh, within the syllabus. So here you have an example of uh, instructor guidance on an assignment. So you see here the assignment. Here you have to do a current state assessment plan. And in the gray part you find um, instructor notes that says uh, how does it look like, uh, how do you help the students in their assignment. Something about how to deliver this course. I will uh, only do this uh, one slide about the 
uh, yeah, well, two slides actually to deliver the course. Prepare yourself by using your IT partition readiness online modules, which will be available on the, par uh, the partner portal. Prepare by doing the exercise of the course first by yourself. Go through the supporting videos for the facilitator role. Go to the assignments, read them, prepare them. Make sure that you live once the exercises. So you have an idea about what the, the students go through. Um, here it says supporting videos. Uh, also, of course, um, the videos of the course itself. I come later on that uh, to the videos of the the Easy Journey Airway Alliance because. Uh, we will have live well videos to show to the students, so they have an introduction of uh, the vision and mission of the company, um, and they work uh, through the videos. You will have to act as a facilitator, guide the students' active learning via both individual and group exercises. Um, you have to ask well, open questions. Uh, try to avoid giving them the answer. Try to, uh, like it says here, do not spoon feed them, do not give the answers to them, because then they will not learn and it will be difficult to, more difficult for them to do the exam in the end. You want them to be prepared, to be practitioners of IT service management, so um, you have to guide and support them. Uh, one more, a more very important thing in this, in uh, while well, the content the official guidance publication described the separate topics, um, you need to understand the holistic uh, context during the whole course. So that's why we come back to the guiding principles. It goes back to what we, we call the, the central spine of the course, the CSI module. So uh, that helps to have the holistic uh, view. I, I showed you just in the exam uh, syllabus of Axelos that they also do questions that relate three topics in one question. So that's why what is important to do that. Get kind of familiar with the toolkit that's in the official uh, guidance publication and know how how it works. Fill them in, complete them, etc. Uh, the assignments in the course, every assignment is different. Some of the assignments that we will see here is, uh, for example, the elevator pits, pitch, the plans, the presentation, reports, the use of templates of the toolbox of the Exodus guidance. Uh, some they have to fill in by themselves, some they have to present. Some of them will might not have ever presented, so it will be difficult for them. Make sure you rotate the roles in the training, that not always the same students is speaking. Uh, make sure if you think the balance of the groups is not okay, mix it up and make other groups. Uh, so this, you're actually a really a coach and a facilitator in this learning experience. Depends on the level of the group. Uh, the, and the direction and creativity of the instructors and the assumption made, so uh, whatever valid. So every time you do an assignment, different things come up. So what we decided to do is there is a, a rubric. Uh, it gives you here at the right side, you see it, weak solution, good solution, best solution. So uh, if they have to do a SWOT analysis, uh, you can guide them. Say, okay, if you only listen one po point in each box, um, that's a weak solution. If you have one or two, in, in two or three, then it gives also a little bit of guidance to the final output, uh, gives you uh, diagnostic information and uh, feedback. Uh, it supports learners by see, okay, uh, how did I do and how can I do better? And you as an instructor need to help them to see the right answers in this. Okay. Facts about practitioner candidates. Yes, one of the things they say also, uh, like I told you, what do we do with students who have no practical business experience? They just did the foundation level, they're maybe a service desk analyst, have not implemented any of the idle things, and now they go to the practitioner and they have no clue. How do you go with that? That might happen. Maybe you have students that already have the expert level and are very experienced implementers of the idle framework. Yes, that is that, that could be the case. Uh, you might want to know when you're going to schedule these trainings, uh, how to mix these students together. If you want to have a, a mixture of different levels or you say, no, I take the all very business experienced in one group, it's up to you. But be aware of that uh, because the minimal uh, requisite of this training is the foundation certificate. So uh, you might uh, come up with a very mixed a group of students. 
the course book. Uh, the course book has uh, three parts, uh, the reference uh, and supporting uh, reading, assignments, the study materials, so the study guide, reference guide, case description, templates, and the additional part, which has the glossary, uh, the syllabus of Excellus, and a feedback form. So uh, basically it looks like the other trainings you're familiar with, with us. Uh, it's uh, built up like this. I will go through the book so you have an idea about the book, how it looks like. We used infographics, so that's very nice. It's something new we're doing. So we have some infographics about CSI approach, about the guiding principles, the OCM communication and measurement metrics. So it means about the five principal topics of this course. You have a, a, a infographic or a mind map that helps you through. That helps a lot for the students, so they can look it up and even take these five mind maps and study it later while taking a coffee. So uh, this is another way of presenting uh, material to the students. It's in the book as well. This is how the agenda looks like. Uh, it's a two-day course. Uh, we have, uh, a, depending on, of course, what time you start, the, the first module is about the introduction of the course. The second uh, about the journey, so um, we'll explain about our case study. Um, you will meet the CEO in, in the video. Uh, we explain the challenges and the mission and um, what is it, uh, what they want to reach uh, in the company. So the journey. Then in, after the coffee break, uh, there's organizational change management and that's the first uh, official lecture. Uh, so, the, halfway the first day you have official lecture, and as you can see here, it's only four lectures. So, it's the three, the five, the seven, and the ten. So, it's always uh, an assignment module, lecture module. And I will assure you, no lecture will be beyond the 30 slides, and that's including the separate introduction slides and the end of the module slides. So, uh, it's not too much lecturing. The book as itself is also not more thicker than one and a half centimeters. So to ease you up, it's, it's not too much lecture. It's more practical appliance. So um, communication will be treated at the four, fifth module, then the roadmap, metrics and measurements, check, control, and redirect, stay tuned, huh? how to keep the momentum, and uh, finishing up with the guiding principles and the exam preparation guide. Um, you can do two things. Either you can do the exam at the end of the second day, or what you can do is uh, save some question after every of the modules, do one or two exam questions. I've seen uh, instructors doing uh, different ways. I personally prefer that they see two exam questions after every module, so they're not so scared if they see it at the end, if they prepare them, manage a little bit of expectations. And also to understand for them, okay, if I, I studied it and did this assignment, how does it reflect in the exam? So how can how, how is it related? So that, that's one of the advantages of doing it after every module. You can also think, okay, if the exam goes about cruising on cars, and in the course study I'm talking about this airline, is it not confusing? Then you can say, okay, prior to reserve it to the end of the second day and take a good time to study the cruise along cars case study and do the exam questions there. It's up to you. Here we see it, the Easy Journey Airways. This is our uh, case study. Um, so this is our customer journey. It goes about the services. Here we see the different things uh, we'll be treating in this uh, customer journey. So. Um, we have this booking system, we have the flight information, check-in luggage, uh, information, airport, get inf airport information, in-flight services, baggage claims. And during this journey, they will happen several times in this two-day course. For example, they want to improve the booking system. And they have problems with the baggage claim. And they will have a new service, in-flight services. We'll go into that later uh, in this trainer trainer, so you have an idea about what kind of assignments the students will, have, will go through. These are the people. Meet the people at uh, Easy Journey Airways. First, we have the Chief Executive Officer. This is Jonas Masters. He will explain to you what's his vision 
uh, where he wants to bring uh, Easy Journey Airways, what are his challenges, what is his vision and mission for the future. Then uh, there will be new services, sorry, I go too fast, new services, and our uh, public relations manager, Linda, uh, is going to explain them to you. And we have a service operation manager, you see a very worried face, Michelle, and uh, that's because something goes wrong. In the end, at the closing uh, modules of this course, you have to bring all together and help her go through uh, a major interruption of the uh, current services. Knowing this and knowing that you will have at least five videos in your course, you may have to make sure that you have audio in your training room. I know that's sometimes a little bit of a challenge, but make sure you have either boxes or uh, um, audio in your training room available. Otherwise, it's very difficult to do the exercises. So we, uh, the case study has three different scenarios. Here you see it. Improve the service of the automated baggage drop. He will explain to you that uh, people are not using the automated baggage drop. How do we make improve the use of the automated baggage drop? How we improve the time handling the automated baggage drop? Um, the other scenario is that we have an interruption on the baggage handling system. So how uh, we have to improve that. And we have the new service I told you. That is the Wi-Fi on the internet on board. That's the new service. So uh, these are the things, the assignments you can work on. Every delivery probably will be different. It means that uh, yeah, a student will come up with different things every time. Um, that's okay. And if you are a uh, uh, senior instructor and you have an experienced implementer or an ITO, that will not be a problem to you. And you can even, if they want to have their own case or bring their own case and they select that, you can do it as well. Be aware, it will be more challenging for you because it asks you a kind of consulting role uh, in your training course. So don't get uh, uh, lost too much and stay, stick with the, the assignments in the course, but it's an option to do that. So now I want to go to the uh, course introduction slides. I see it's 10 to 5, uh, well, 12 to 5 actually. So I will spend on module one and two, and then we have a little break. So you can fresh up, uh, take some coffee, or check your email, or Facebook, whatever, <laughs> and we come back. But uh, let me show you now the book. I have it open here. Uh, I actually have the, this is the instruction manual. Go back to the first slide. goes off, no, put it there, I got make it bigger for you, don't worry. Let's see if you can see it like this. Uh, you are familiar with our uh, instructor material, you know that at the left side you see how the students are looking in their books and at the right side you see the instructor notes. Uh, that's not different in this book. So here you see the book, uh, um, a little bit about how the people can register it, the timetables and agendas the syllabus of the exam, and then we go into the 10 modules, course introduction, journey, change management, desire, etc. Uh, and the last you have the exercise sample paper and the forms and, and, and tools. Okay, here you see the agenda. Um, here you see the syllabus, so what will be examined, I showed you that uh, just before. And there you see the first uh, course introduction. I go a little back to the slides. Uh, I stayed here, the course introduction. Uh, at the right side, you see we have 32 slides and 45 minutes. Uh, what do you have to treat in this 45 minutes? I explain the different IT service management concepts that are essential driver of continuous service improvement. How do you apply these principles or the guidance purpose in a real world context? Uh, how do you, uh, what is the CSI approach, given in an organizational context? He'll talk a little bit about the alignment with other frameworks and good practice and methodologies, uh, use measurements and metrics, uh, communicate and uh, resistance to change. So you see here a short introduction on the course. Let me go into the slides. We have an idea about the slides that go, go with them. Um, here it is. 
So here's just the course agenda, of course, you have to show them. Uh, and you see here also a very nice about this course are the graphics. So uh, several colors and modern uh, layout, uh, not too much text on the slides. Uh, it is a practical course, so uh, the people have, students have space below the slides to write down things that you are discussing. Next to the slides, you have some notes that you can use during the, uh, the training. We're still working on the instructor notes, so what you see here is not the final version. Um, the student workbook is ready uh, and we're working, putting our last hands on the, as we speak, on the instructor manual and will be released next week. Um, a little bit about the expectation of the participants. Well, nothing new for you. Your role as an instructor. Introduction of the Easy Journey Airways. Explain to them that all the based on a fictitious airline company, EG Airways. Uh, here you will have to do the first uh, introduction of the CEO. Focus a little bit on what is, what is it about? What is the customer journey? And meet the people. And the CSI approach, here you see it. And you see that uh, uh, as we go through the modules of the book, every step in the course will be highlighted. So if we go to what is the vision, there will be an ex uh, assignment with the vision. Where we now has to do with the baseline assessment, uh, there is an exercise related to that. So at least one, two, three, four, five, six exercises related to the CSI approach as a, as a central spine in this course. Uh, the, the business questions about uh, what is the vision, where are we now, uh, what, what is a CSI register, and here you see the first infographic. So, uh, of course, it's very small here, so later on will be enlarged, uh, so you, you can read it actually. Uh, you can deliver it separately to your students if you want to, it's up to you. Um, but this is the explanation of this is the use of the infographics. Here you have it, bigger of course, so you can read it. Uh, well, you cannot read it on my screen, I know, but it will be there. The core structure. Oh, I'm closing my uh, outlook. Oh, sorry for that. Let's go to the continual here about the guiding principles. I, uh, I also talked with some of the future instructors and they said it would be nice, for example, to print this one and you can hold, you hang it up in your classroom. You have here the guiding principles, keep it simple, collaborative, be transparent, observe directly. These are the nine pr guiding principles where we go through the whole course and there will be questions in the exams as well. So if you, ha you hang it up, uh, while you go through the course, you can say, okay, which guiding principles are we talking about now? Are we talking about uh, collaborate? Oh, yes, okay. Uh, are we talking about being transparent or not? Uh, keep it simple. Don't be too complex. So you can, these is the for sexual, a successful adoption of, a, of this new mindset. It's up to you to do that in your training, of course, which is a suggestion. Um, about the exam, how you do the exam, the recommendation, certification, a little bit about what I just told you about the cruise along cars, the kind of questions that will be in the exam, looks like foundation. Uh, there was some discussion uh, in Axelos as well, they should do it like the capability of the life cycle, why not do it in the same way, in the gradient uh, answers, like five points, three points, but uh, we had, they had some uh, statistical research about it, that the pass rate is too high for a statistical, uh, how you say, um, chances that you pass the exam. So the best way they say that you have a really objective uh, way of knowing that the students really understand the material is 40 questions and then just one good answer so that they turn out doing the same as a foundation, 40 questions, 65 pass rate, um, and then the difficulties, of course, uh, if you have five possible answers, they say, okay, is one and two the, uh, the good answer, of two and three, all or nothing, these kind of answers, the same as foundation will be here as well. 
and that's where it finishes the module. Let's go quickly to uh, the second, uh, the journey. Here you see it's an exercise, one hour, 45 minutes, only 12 slides. Uh, what is the vision? And we will work to uh, EGA Airways, adapt and adopt when using idle guidance. We have to recall the definition of a service. And we start with the first step, where are you now? Uh, and focusing on value and, and collaborate. And uh, describe a structure of a CSI register. So we work with here with a toolkit, start working to fill in a completed toolkit. Uh, and we were at the second step, where are we now? And evaluate the current situation. So uh, just go quickly to this instruction manual before we go to the break. Um, here you see um, the module two, the, the movie of the CEO. It has a, you, can, you, you will get the videos included in the material, some speaking points for you. Um, some speaking points of uh, Jonas Masters. After the video, you as a CIO uh, will take you through the challenges provided and uh, you will guide them through. Uh, the current cha challenges, as I, I told you about, and uh, this is referred to the EJ Airways case study, um, and you will get some uh, assignment in your role as a CEO to work and to introduce these initiatives. The CSI approach, what is the vision, where are we now? Uh, these will be the steps handled in these exercises. A little bit of explanation of what, what is that. In the book there is a complete description of the CSI module, or the TSO or material guidance uh, book. But you will have to explain it to the students here. And, and then they have to work with it. And here you see the assignment. So create a current state assessment plan. So that's what they have to do. You need to use the following criteria to evaluate the three initiative to make a good decision. The goal, scope, assessment, requirements, the SWOT. Uh, and then you have to deliver an elevator pitch to the stakeholders. So um, they have to work in groups. You have to divide the participants in groups and have to investigate the three initiatives. And, and you have to work together. How do you know the student what they can use, what kind of templates? It will be here. So the sources and input for your exercises are actually in the scenario booklet. So it's a CSI register. And in the toolkit, you see the SWOT or elevator pitch. So in the book, this old book, you have to go through it and see what's written there and work with it. So uh, our philosophy is that students learn more by doing, uh, more by graphicals and more by videos than uh, us explaining and teaching and talking. Sorry for this two-hour uh, talking, but <laughs> uh, that's how students learn nowadays. So they have to live through it and work with it. So instead of explaining everything, just make them work with it. Give them the book, let them go through it and, and fill it in. Here I have a little bit of source input for you as an instructor. Then uh, there's the decision time. Then the elevator pitch needs to uh, gloss. So uh, people have to do this, uh, and the other ones are going to uh, evaluate the elevator pitch and what they have learned from it and what they think about it. And then every of these modules closes with this kind of, uh, uh, how you say, a qu a quadrant, uh, with the things that you discuss in this module. So you see here, we talked about the strategy, we talked about assessment, we talked about goals, CSI, knowledge. So this is like a summary uh, round about, a roundup about the things discussed in uh, this module, and every module will have a slide like this. So now it's five o'clock, uh, Frank. Um, are there any questions? Yes, we have some questions coming in. Um, let's see, we had a question about the train the trainer, uh, or more actually when trainers can prepare themselves to take the course and the exam. So when will instructors actually be able to take the course and sign up for the exam? Uh, you can uh, go and um, do the online uh, training course already. So you can, uh, you will put it on a, a partner portal, right, uh, Frank? Yes, that's right. Uh, so we will have start. additional material on that. 
Yeah, the, these are six uh, e-learning modules that goes through the book. There is also uh, the mock exam there. And our material will be available next week. So uh, I think that would be great. If you want to start today, it's uh, you can start with the e-learning uh, modules of uh, the book from by Axelos. And then next week you can start doing the, uh, the course, reviewing the course material of us. And the exam by itself, I'm not sure if it's available already in the first week of February. Officially, Axelos is launching his uh, the ITO Partitioner course the 25th of February. So write it down in your book. Uh, you will get a notice for that. You will get an official invitation. But it will be the 25th of February. So I'm not sure if their exam will be available before that because I just get a notification that it's moved the date from the 9th to the 25th. Okay. Then we have a, a question. Uh, what is the minimum recommend, recommended number of students to make sure the assignments and collaborative work is a quality experience for the students? That's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, I, I've noticed also when I was teaching uh, that sometimes it's difficult to fill in a complete uh, classroom for students and there is a breakdown or break even in, which is financially uh, <laughs> acceptable. But I would say uh, between four or six is definitely the, the minimum. Uh, and I would also put a maximum to the amount of students. And that will be a maximum of, of 16. And that's already a lot. But I don't put more than that because that will not be a good learning experience. If you have 16, you can make four groups of four persons. And if you have uh, between four and six, that's actually a minimum, minimum of the minimum. Um, yeah, you can make two groups of three that at least you are presenting one to another. Okay, and then another question that came in is, uh, have any translations already been planned? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, well, um, I don't know, we can translate the material, but it doesn't make sense if their exam is not translated. As there is not many slides, I don't see any problem. If you have any question about translating, please contact us and We'll put it on our uh, release calendar and, and try to fix it if there's enough question for it, no? Yeah, exactly. Also, I had the question from a partner from another part of the world that wanted to translate it into their local language. So we will be looking at translating the material uh, maybe into some languages, but uh, the exams, we're not sure when they will be there. And obviously the guidance book that Claudine showed you at the beginning that for now is only in English, so uh, we will see it per country base and uh, depending on the, uh, the demand that is there. Then we have a question and uh, this is more a, a different question. I have a, the OSA, the SOA, the PPO and practitioner certifications, am I allowed to take the MELC exam? Well, the MELC exam is a different thing. I think we're, we're talking about out of practitioner now. Uh, Claudine? Uh, before you take milk, how many points do you have to have before you can take milk? Is that if it includes in the points to take the milk exam? Yeah, yeah. The question. This is more. I I think either I misinterpret the question or uh, the question is different. The question is: I have an OSA, SOA, PPO, plus practitioner certificates. Am I allowed to take the milk exam? I think we will contact this person directly because MELC exam has other criteria and we're now looking at idle practitioner. If the question is, can I take the idle practitioner exam, uh, there you have to have the points as Claudine pointed out, plus CSI, but for the first year, CSI is, is not mandatory. Is that correct, Claudine? Uh, yes, uh, it's uh, not mandatory yet to have the CSI exam already done. Uh, but you need at least 12 credits that was mentioned there. If you did the idle version 2, and masters and you did the bridge to get the version three you probably have already all the points and necessary points but unfortunately you will you will need the ito practitioner exam done and the csi in the next in this is this year so yeah. that's a prerequisite for the uh, trainers and then we got a question about the commercial combination of foundation and practitioner in a week uh, you kind of touched on that a little bit maybe you can give your opinion on how that would work um, sorry, I didn't hear it. It's, uh, I the, didn't hear the combination it. of foundation and practitioner in one week. Do you think that that's a good idea? 
Yeah, I, 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 we discussed it a lot with Axelas as well because we think it, it's it's kind of heavy, uh, heavy training for especially for students who have not done uh, anything about this yet. And foundation is the first part, and they do uh, directly after the practitioner. But if you have people with a lot of business experience and have done a lot but have not done the the uh, any courses yet. It could be possible, but be aware it could be heavy as, the, as well. I know there's a commercial advantage of selling them together, uh, but I think you have to separately discuss this with every uh, client if it is a desired uh, situation. You're free to do it. And there's no limitation. You can do it. Yeah, and it is smart to take the exam outside of the, uh, the course time, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. Otherwise, it would take up too much time in this course. So it's better to uh, to do the exam uh, within the next ten days. Um, someone else indeed mentioned also that the combination would be a very heavy task with lots of evening reading. I, I think that is indeed a very good uh, remark. Okay, looking at the time, let's take a ten-minute break um, and then. Uh, come back, let's see, it's uh, 7 past the hour, and let's come back at uh, 17 minutes past the hour, and then yeah. uh, resume. So everybody has 10 minutes to uh, indeed check Facebook, go to the bathroom, get a drink, and then resume in 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready to continue? I think we still have yes, everybody on board looking at the list of attendees. Um, there was just one last question that came in uh, as we were finishing off. Maybe we can use that as we start again. When will okay. the official material that you mentioned so far be available? Uh, our course material will be available next week uh, and uh, the e-learning material of studying the, the TSO book is already available. It will be put on the partner website. Perfect, thanks. Um, oh. Let's go through, I think I left uh, in module three, change management. Uh, it's a lecture module. It's 45 minutes, 24 slides only. Uh, you see it's a, a lot more e uh, at ease than the, the speed you have uh, in the, the, the foundation course. In the foundation course, you have one and a half minute per slide almost, and you have to run through it. And here, it's a little bit more easy. Uh, what we also did is try to put less information in the slides. So you have to, as, as an instructor, uh, prepare yourself and speak. We have speaking points, of course. It's about the material of the book. The book is not so thick, so you should know. Um, and it prevents a little bit of reading from the slides. Uh, we have had a lot of feedback from you instructors that uh, it's not so pleasant to have long sentences on the slides. So we try to avoid it as much as possible. Uh, explain the role and impact of the organizational change management. Um, describe the purpose and the value of organization change management. We'll see, go to the book, that a lot of these things, uh, it's also important to the students to explain to them what is the difference between change management and uh, organizational change management. Because uh, here we see it in the, the fifth slide of the module. Uh, sometimes people have a little bit of misunderstanding what is organizational change management. What does it mean? What do you understand with that? So you have to explain it. it has to do with people. It has to do with people adapting a new way of working uh, about people uh, trying to understand and grasp the processes and uh, organize, organize them differently. How do you handle resistance and how do you involve people? That has to do with organizational change management. Uh, so it's different than the change management, of course, of the foundation. So here uh, you see uh, some of the themes that you will discuss in the purpose and approaches of the organizational change management. So it's concerned with people side, a structured approach. It has to do with the, between the heart and mind of those involved. Uh, it reduces uh, resistance, etc. So it has to do with that. Um, what is essential for successful implementation? We have five essentials. You have to explain to them about these five essentials. Uh, you see here it comes back also about the guiding principles. Now you know it know by heart, but all these symbols is one of the nine guiding principles. So that's why I say it would be nice to hang it up in your classroom if you want to, or print a little card from it. 
the change curve, of course, uh, uh, you start with, uh, okay, are we changing? What is the next step? Uh, sometimes there comes the immobilization and the denial and the resistance go, people get at anger and, and uh, then they start bargaining and the depression and, until the final acceptance. So you have to explain this change curve. Uh, what does it do with people in new situations? You can use some examples for them. So of the real life situation they're in now, moving from one city to another, changing schools, all these kind of things. Uh, so then for them to understand and, and translate or identify them with the material discussed here. You have to know that sometimes you do you have a group of students that are very technical and when you start think, talking about more people thing, uh, some people get lost and they look at you like what? And um, some people like it very a lot. So you have different kind of students and make sure that you hook, hook up everybody and, and try to explain for them. So uh, sometimes we do some little exercises and we say okay stand up everybody uh, look each other in the eyes, uh, go and stand up in Paris, change something about you, turn around, um, cannot see it, and turn back and see if you can observe the change and see if what people do with that. How do people react? If you, you have to change something about rolling a sleeve of your uh, shirt or uh, untying your tie or uh, putting off a shoe or whatever, and you see if they, you do this three times and you say, go back to sit, to you sit on your normal, in your chair, everybody uh, returns to the original situation. Belts get buckled up again, ties are not down, and sleeves go down again, shoes got on. And you say, did I say that you could put on your shoes again or tie your knot? And they're like, oh, yes. So that's what happens with change of people and situation also. People try to get back to a comfortable situation. What is the comfortable situation? The situation they're in now. So these kind of things you have to discuss in this chapter a little bit about the Gardner hype cycle, uh, about how do you successfully implement organizational change. Um, well, there is this, uh, as I say, the instructor notes are not complete yet. They're working on it, but we have uh, notes uh, next to the slides that give you explanation of it. And here you see the relation with the guiding principle below. So um, here talk about this stakeholder and sponsor management and uh, this racing metrics. So you're going to explain to them a racy chart and you have the guiding principle related to them. The stakeholder management, you, know, you see here uh, stakeholder analysis. So where do you map your the people in your organization? Are there critical stakeholders? Are there major stakeholders, significant or minor? And what do you do with them? So you have to explain this because later in the exercise, they have to also apply this, fill it in for the easy journey areas. Sponsor management, uh, fill it in. Communication, how do you handle uh, communication? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, about empowerment, uh, resistance management. Um, what is it <coughs> and how do you manage it? And a um, little bit about uh, reinforcement, uh, feedback from people, what do you do with them, how do you act, and um, how does the continuous improvement and CSI related with the organizational change management. And then it's the end of the module. So the fourth uh, module is about where do we want to be. Let me go back to my original slides. Is that prepared for you? <coughs> this is the module of the exercise. Again, this uh, module takes more than one hour. People have to start working together. So only 14 slides, but the 14 slides are actually explaining the assignment. And it goes to the step in the CSI model, where do I want to be? explains the definition, connection, difference amongst the concept of vision and measurement trails, describes the importance of derived measurement and metrics, a little bit about CSFs and smart targets. So let's go in and go to the uh, desire. Let me see, it's here. Yep. Oh, I'm in the, the first page. Where do you want to be? Uh, here you see the uh, CSI approach. Hey, where do we want to be? Explanation of it at the right side. It's, uh, every time we do an exercises, this is the final spine, so uh, the central spine. So there's where all the exercises are hang up during during our journey. 
uh, outputs. Here you see the vision to the measurement trail, uh, vision to down to the measurements. Try to, uh, to work with them to do this because necessary for their exercises. So you see here some of the explanation, uh, speaker points. The goals and value of Easy Journey Airways. Need to say it now. Uh, offer a high quality product with a personal touch that makes us stand out. Support creativity and innovation for improving effectiveness. So it's interesting here to talk to them. Okay, if this is our goal, what does it mean for an incident process? Or what does it mean for change process? What do you have to take in consideration? And people find it very difficult to match it, but it's just a cascade they have to understand. And they will be working with it. So never lose the big picture. Uh, we have these three initiatives about the check-in luggage, baggage, the in-flight services, the initiative three, and the, the baggage claim system. So we have to think about this, uh, remind the participants that you need to consider where they are in the journey and how the improvements go and uh, work with them. So there's some uh, information on the right side to guide you through it. I, I don't have time, of course, in this two-hour training, training sessions to go into detail too much, but you will have the information so you can study it by yourself. So this is the assignment. Define where you want to be. You need to use the following criteria to evaluate the three initiatives and make a good decision. So uh, who are your stakeholders? What is the purpose of the business case? Uh, what are the list of objectives? So, uh, and you have to deliver a convincing presentation to the stakeholders. Then you see, what can you use? Well, you can use a CSI register. You can list of functional and non-functional requirements in the guidance publication. And in the toolkit, start uh, the presentation worksheet. And you can use uh, this while you're working out this with your team. There's also... For example, you can use the items of the first assignment, the business case, or the list of functional and non-functional requirements, or the stakeholder categorization metrics you did in the first assignments. So it's, the idea is that you use everything and it combines together in the next step of the exercises. Um, presenting in the, the, the power of the story, compelling story consists of following three criterials, introduction, seduction, and production. So it's how do you present uh, and share it with each other. Um, also try to explain them about giving feedback. Sometimes people are not used to receiving feedback or giving feedback, especially in different uh, uh, cultural circumstances. I know I have been teaching in different countries that uh, you have to make an agreement between your students what is acceptable uh, feedback and how do you receive feedback. I always say it's like a present on a, a wedding. You get it and you don't uh, unpack it until you're together with your uh, couple uh, celebrating next day, but not at the moment you receive the package. So it's the same with feedback. Receive it as a gift, say thank you, and that's it. Don't go and fight. So this kind of discussion, you have to discuss with them uh, some of the rules during the course. But of course you know. Uh, the debrief at the end of the course, uh, the, the module, sorry, there is this slide again that gives a summary of what's created in this module. So um, you can uh, go here, you have the following questions, it guides you a little bit through when you're talking with the participants. Which stakeholders have you included? What are the conclusion assumptions? Uh, how is it related with the initiatives, the objectives? Are you, did you convince the, your audience, etc.? So this is about uh, module four. Let's go to module five. Um, oh, I put in six, but it's actually five. I'm so sorry. I was counting on the way. Explain uh, nature, value, importance, and benefits of good communication. This is a lecture module again. It's only 30 minutes, 25 slides, so don't stay too long on it. They have to work it anyway. Uh, I always think uh, it's good to have uh, some feedback about the theory they have to read and know for the exam, but it's better that they work with it. So we explain them, we guide them, we say where they can find it, and then they have to work with it. Okay. So let's go to the our instruction manual. Uh, let's go to uh, module five. Communication. Uh, we see here the four graphs. What is good communication? 
uh, goes back also related to the guiding principle. Successful, timely, effective communication uh, can be different between winning or losing a game. So uh, you can ask some participants, listen, what, why did some initiative did not succeed? And how was that related with communication? And why did one of your initiatives in your company succeed? And what was the central part of communication in that? Let them discuss with you and explain to them so they get into the in the mood of, of what is the importance of communication? What are the benefits? Now, here you see uh, the five benefits that uh, the Book of Axelos talks about. Uh, communication principles. Uh, there are five communication principles as well. It's a two-way process, communicating all the time, timely and frequently. Uh, no single uh, method of communication works for everybody. So you see here um, images to start uh, explaining principles. Then we go into detail by every uh, principle of communication. So you see here communicating all the time, uh, timely and frequency. Uh, no single method of communication works for everybody. Um, the message is the medium. This is a generally not a very difficult module for the students not to grab and not in the exam. But anyway, you have to uh, go through them. Um, that's why it's only half an hour. Areas of communication, verbal, written, nonverbal, ritual. Steps in communication, communication planning. Types of communication, physical, phone, email, instant messages, this is all information from the book. Graphics, storytelling, reports, and how do you use, what kind of advanced uh, techniques do you have, advanced techniques. Meetings and workshop, how do you make them effect effectively and efficiently. This is also interesting because different styles and different ways of working, for example, if you do a lot of lean or DevOps, your meetings and workshops are different. So in Agile, you have stand-ups. Uh, maybe in, if you have an OBEA room where you have different kind of visualization of the way of working, so that will be different in, in all the companies. You might need to uh, talk with your students about how do they think about effect, effective meetings and how, what do they think about workshops, what works for them and their company, how does it work with their environment as well. So the goal of the business case, what is the business case? Uh, the business uh, model canvas, this is one of the tools that are, uh, or templates that's in the toolkit. Uh, students will have to fill it in as well. Uh, here's just one completed already. And that's the final uh, slide of the communication chapter. Let's go to the sixth uh, module. That's about the roadmap. This is, uh, again, uh, we just did a lecture one, so we're ready for an exercise one, do some exercise with the students. One hour, 15 minutes, only 24 slides. And we go to the next step is how, did we, how do we get there? So the planning part of uh, the CSI spine. So you have to define a plan of action to achieve the defined improvement objective. Apply the knowledge of common execution pitfalls to ensure successful execution of improvement plan. <clears throat> and how measurement metric communication and uh, organizational uh, change management will be addressed during implementation. So you see here it comes together. So here we combine the three lecture modules together with the CSI step, how do we get there? And they have to do the exercise combining these. And that's the thing that Axelus is looking for in these courses, that you holistically look at it and combine everything together so it sees it's not separate things. Let's go to the module and show you a little bit how the module is built up. Um, you see the roadmap and you will see the CSI. How do we get there? As I told you, every uh, exercise module starts with the CSI module. It explains a little bit about these steps. Uh, what are the, you see here one of the things, for example, five major aspects of service design. It's a refresher. This is something they should have known from the foundation, but we all know it's sometimes difficult because uh, when we start doing capability of life cycle course, uh, you have to refresh all foundation. Uh, either they, they forgot it or either it has been a long time that they saw it uh, anyway, or they this out of context. You will need to refresh a little bit. In this case, uh, it's a little refresher for um, to do, be able to, uh, to do the exercise. So here, a refresher about the balance scorecard. 
uh, CSF and KPIs. This is also in the book, so you can uh, here it says uh, you can look it up in the book as well. Uh, mixing the frameworks and methods. It's actually not a part of the exam, be aware. They will not ask you what is Lean or what's Agile, or what's Cloud or anyone, but you know that your students are living in this world. They're living in the world that either their supplier is doing in, uh, work in Scrum teams or either a part of their company is developing software uh, or either uh, your customer is asking you some COVID controls. Anyway, you, there is a mixture of frameworks and methods in different companies uh, available. You will have to share with your students how this works together. It's not a part of the exam question, but it's part of uh, adapt and adopt uh, ITIL. Here we see Linda, she's the head of the PR, and she will tell us uh, about that she's excited about the new uh, uh, service they're going to release, uh, and you have to work with that. So it's a, a video in this module, uh, you have to do a meeting. Uh, there are some consideration. Uh, you have to do some research, include relevant stakeholders, uh, look at some uh, requirement documentation. And the final thing about this assignment is that you have to have the meeting where you uh, seek alignment and agreement about your findings. What information can you use? And sources and the inputs. You can use a skill metrics or a business case, and there are several templates available in the course book and in the TSO material, implementation plan, communication plan, balance scorecards, how do you make the meeting minutes. So these templates are available and you can use it here in your exercises. When is, a, is it a, a new success? Now here you see a little bit about getting into character. You are AG Airways, explanation of the course. And this is the CEO again. He has an, a second message. Uh, and he wants to ask you for something which you have to help him with. So uh, define the objectives, what you needs to be achieved, and how do you stay in control when starting the journey? Ensure that the focus is on the right objective. So this is uh, how do we stay, huh? what's the real roadmap? How do we achieve that? So we have to work with that. And there's meeting time. So we have to do the meeting. And at the end, we have the debrief. Uh, how did it go? What did you see? What worked? What didn't work? How do you convince or didn't convince? And we go to module seven. The seventh module is about metrics and measurements. This is an, uh, the, uh, not the last uh, lecture module. There's one more, but this is the third uh, lecture module that goes about uh, CSFs. Um, metrics, cascades, and hierarchies, what is uh, the state of an assessment plan, uh, and reporting. So let's go to the book. What do we see in the book? And definitions, some definitions. You can ask them for what they recall, what they think about it, what's the difference for them, how did it work in their company, so you have an idea about where they come from and what's their current maturity in, in metrics and measurements, uh, what are their current challenges also. Then some things you can do with them, uh, the true or false, is this statement true or is this statement false? So they will have to answer uh, this. No. Explain to you why. Why do we how to um, measure, work with them, uh, understand that this is also a little bit about uh, the foundation material, whether they direct, justify, intervene, uh, explain to them, work with them. What is it, the CSF and the KPI? Explain to them what is SMART. Uh, continuous improvements, why do you do this? Uh, what it, does it help? Etc. Cascades and hierarchies. I already talked to you a little bit about this. So you have to show this and work with them. You see here again related guiding principles. The goal cascade. If you go from enterprise goals down to the enabling goals, how does this cascade and what kind of figures do you have here? Uh, here it says, for example, if you know it, uh, if you know a little bit about the goal with Goal cascade will help you to explain this. Of course, it's not uh, part of this course, but 
uh, some companies might have done this call cascades from COBRA, so you can help them understand how it relates to ITIL. Um, yeah, you see here uh, uh, some organizational cascades from business units to departments to team to personal cascades and personal uh, performance indicators. Uh, the different categories, yeah, this is one of the questions also in the exam, as I told you, about uh, the different types of categories, if it's technical process and service, which was in the foundation course as well, but some extra information is about progress, compliance, effective efficiency, or leading and trailing inside out. The next slide will explain that more in detail. Uh, try, you can ask them to write down an example of each of them below in their lines they have available here to make it interactive half an hour explain to them okay what's the difference between compliance indicator and effective or progress indicator um, something about leading and trailing uh, one indicator shows you what you have done the last month and how you're going to reach the next month will be a trailing so for, okay do I read what do I do the next days and be, be able to still complete with my agreed service level for example so you have to explain this. Some uh, indicators will be outside in or inside out. You have to put some examples here and explain to them. Um, and how do you assess assessment compon uh, components? And the final uh, slide uh, with the assessment outputs. Reporting, presenting results. How do you present them? Dashboards. How does the uh, report looks like? And then you complete the module. Let's go to dates. Check, control, and redirect. This is an exercise module. It goes to the last step before uh, keeping the momentum. Did we get there? So it applies to relevant methods and techniques to assess efficiency of the improvements the methods and techniques to communicate results to the stakeholders and uh, design a report or a communication audit. So this, you see the relationship again between the three major points and, and the fi uh, central spine, the CSI module. Okay, quickly go to the part in the book here. You see it, the last one goes to explanation. We re refresh up of the DIKW module. Um, the benefits realization, this is one of the sheets in the toolkits. You explain to the students how, to, how it works so they can complete it. They can find it in the book as well. Uh, if they do not understand the, the plan to check X cycle, you can here repeat it. And here's the assignment. The assignment is develop a, a report. What should be in the report is written down here. What information should be there. Analyze each other reports. Discuss the next steps is the way to uh, interact or uh, show your results. What kind of sources and input can you use doing the assignment? So we have four templates here, three templates are actually an email. So you can use that and you can use the balance scores of the previous assignments, assignment one and two and assignment three. All this information comes together here and you have to uh, use it. You have to uh, analyze each other's reports and then uh, stop your work. There is a problem. Allow the participants to finish their assignment and then you play this video and the video has an incident. Uh, there is a baggage system down and the internet on board does not work. So uh, what if any of the changes uh, are required? Uh, what, what happens? Uh, you have to work with the students now to do, take the right decisions. Um, you show the video here, and they have to do with the assignment. They have a discussion time. Uh, do not get caught up in resolving the incident, but focus on how do we communicate? How do we monitor? What are the reporting uh, aspects of the incidents? And then we have a deep brief at the end of the module to see, okay, uh, how did we do? Uh, what did we realize? Etc. Okay, so uh, let's go to uh, the almost final module, it's uh, module 9. This is an exercise, and uh, this is the last step of the CSI module, as you expected already, I suppose. This how do we keep the momentum going? Um, so let's go and see what happens there.
stay tuned. So you see the step here, an explanation of the CSI, what does it mean for you? Uh, so we have a resistant management plan. Uh, this is one of the, the things in the Axelos guidance print, uh, book. It's an example, so you can discuss it and fill it in with your uh, students. Uh, a little bit about uh, the reinforce uh, with balanced diversity. It is an extra source. You can find it here, and there's a link. You can look it up. Uh, it's not part of the uh, exam, but it's extra information, so it's nice to have and work with it. So we have the assignment here. Prepare uh, your answers. Consider the following question to prepare the answers. Which approach will you follow to make improvements for the norm, uh, the new normal? Yeah, something changed, so there's a new normal. How uh, do we take it from there in operations? Uh, what are different types of benefits that you recognize for different stakeholders? How will you keep, regain, and maintain trust and commitment? And what is the level and type of commitment you will need for this initiative? Uh, are you competent uh, from here and forward? And you have to make a solution here, a debate to the proposed solution. What can you use? Here we have, again, some templates available for you, a CSI register and an email from the CEO. Uh, what does he say? Um, so discuss what is his state of mind? What do you think about what's happening? And there's debate time. And uh, the final one is, is uh, again, this colorful uh, final slide of the module. And then we arrived at the last one. And the last one actually is a roundup because probably you already really discussed all of these guiding principles in your uh, uh, course. So, but you have a final wrap up, uh, module 10, the nine guiding principles. So here you see the, the little tree and the, with all the guiding principles and you're going to discuss them more in detail here. Why is it at the end and not at the beginning? Because at the beginning you probably already also to talk about the guiding principle, but during the way they might have forgotten it. So it's like a summary, a conclusion, and it helps the students do this at the end of the course. We did the same in London with the ATOS, and it really helps to uh, to to finalize the last exercise doing this and, and hearing it from uh, from us. Let's see what is in this module. And the guiding principles, applying them here. Okay, refreshing. Fill it in, complete it. Do you, do you have them right? Um, then talk a little bit about the backgrounds uh, and the purpose of the guiding principle of each of them. Then examples and applying them. And then we go to this uh, exam scenario. We have uh, driveview.com, eh, the University of Bechstein, Global City IT, and the Department of Transportation of Cruise Along Cars. So go with your students, read the scenario, uh, how the companies are related, what assumptions do you have with the current information, what questions do you have, uh, analyze the situation very well with them. So they can be able to map uh, all the different uh, principles to this, um, exam scenario, here you, say, you see a, a little template so you can use with them. You can also discuss oh, okay, what are the main characteristics of the company, what kind of challenges do you see. Of course, uh, these inf this information will be available before uh, the exam. So that's very nice to prepare themselves for this case study. And it was just like the, the previous master courses that you also had the cases up front. Um, but uh, in the exam itself, and I can show you some exam questions. Let me, uh, I think it's more at the end. Um, so you have an idea about an exam question. Here you see cruise along cars, driveview.com. And then you have additional information available. So this, for example, additional inf information is enabled to answer questions 7 to 12. And this additional information is to answer 13 to 20. Do you have to read it? Yeah, you most certainly have to, to in order to answer questions. Well, I can ask you the same if you do a capability or life cycle course. Do you need to read the additional information? Most of the time that you do. So let's go to one of the questions. Um, for example, this one. Drive you 
Dotcom depth analysis and revealed the goals and strategy of the improvement support uh, of the organization vision. Now you see five statements about the where do we want to be step. And then you have to give the answer, what's the right combination? What are the questions you should ask there? Okay. Now a little, uh, let me give another example of a question. This is about a stakeholder analysis. And then you have, okay, you have the drive view that come researchers, the manager, and the project manager, and the crews along. And how is their interest? Is it low, high, medium? And what is their interest? So then you have to say, okay, is it, what is the right combination? Which role has been entered correctly? So these kind of answers and questions you will have uh, in your exam. Um, I was thinking about showing you a little bit about the I think it's before this one uh, about the templates. Yeah, you see it here. Uh, for example, um, here a little bit about uh, the sponsor diagram. So these are the templates straight from the book. It's in your student workbook, also an instructor workbook, because students can uh, go uh, and write in it as they go along in the exercises. Um, so they will have it also in their book, but as they cannot write in their book for the exam, you can they can write in this one. Well, I think I have treated everything now, uh, everything I wanted to show you. I couldn't show the videos because uh, that would take too much time for you, but you will have them anyway to your uh, availability, so you can can see them by yourself, the five videos related with the course. I think it's a very interesting course. I personally like it a lot because it's uh, practical. Uh, you have to make you work with the students. It's also nice to know you have direct feedback if they really understand the concepts. And you see also where they struggle with. So here comes uh, consulting and training comes together. That's nice about this training. I'm curious about your feedback and questions. Great, Claudine. Thank you. That was very good, very good information. And uh, you were very clear because we didn't have that many questions coming in. But oh. <laughs> um, if you have, yeah, no, but that was that means that you were very crystal clear. So that's only very good. We do have a couple of questions. One of the questions is how do we access the partner portal? And I'll answer that straight away. The way to access the partner portal is uh, obviously to register there. And if you don't know where the partner portal is, talk to your Quint representative and uh, they can help you out. And in the follow-up mail, you will get the contact of a Quint representative in your area of the world if you're not yet a Quint partner. If you're already a Quint Solutions partner, talk to the person that, uh, that you normally talk to, either on the uh, sales or on the back office side, and they can help you out into how, uh, how you can access the, uh, the partner portal. So a lot of the information we share will be on there for our partners. And uh, some information also is on a Vimeo area. You know, Vimeo is like YouTube where we post the webinars. So in the follow-up mail, you will also get a link to the location on Vimeo where you will find not only this presentation, but other presentations we've done up till now and also future presentations. So be sure to go and check that out. Then I had a question, Claudine, about uh, preparation. As the course is not mandatory for the exam, the question was, could a student pass the exam without having set the course? Uh, I think it's personally very uh, difficult. As uh, For instructors, it's already difficult to do this, and we, are we supposed to be a uh, level higher than our students. I imagine students doing that. Just figure your last class of foundation students, do you think they would be able to do this without uh, training? I think it, it, it's, it's difficult. Uh, of course, everybody's free to do it. It's not forbidden. You don't need to follow training to be able to order the exam. So uh, that's something Exos didn't uh, yeah, fix. Uh, but I think it's highly not recommended to do that. <laughs> it's recommended to do the training. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's also what I heard back from Axlos more than once, that they say you have to do the training. Then, uh, talking about the time schedule, the training and the exam, normally what we see with the foundation course is that the exam is on the third day of the, uh, of the course. Would it be advisable to do the exam on the last day of this course? The second day. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's it's going to be stretchy and very. Uh, I, I personally don't have very good feedback on that. I would not recommend it to do it. I would recommend uh, uh, another day within the next 10 days to do the exam, uh, or maybe the next morning, the third day morning, uh, if you are there uh, before taking a flight to go back to your home. Uh, I don't know. It, it's up to you, but. Uh, the exam, uh, you saw the schedule, you saw me going through the modules, you saw the slides. The slides are not so very heavy, but what is more heavy is the exercise. So if you rush through it, the student don't have any more, a lot of time to do the exercise. So it will be recommendable to do it after, which of course it's up to you to do it or not. Then you spoke about the sample exam, and um, I know that you mentioned uh, using the sample exam after, after the modules. Will there be some indication of which questions you can best use with which modules? Uh, well, uh, well, excellent. Uh, also, uh, also, oh, I heard myself oh, double now. Uh, has the, they say what kind of questions are related to which module in the book? So there is a possibility that you can select them. Of course, we can do a suggestion, but it's up to you whether you do it or not. And uh, you can say, okay, I only do one question after every module or two questions. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, the description of Axelos is very uh, clear, so you can see uh, uh, which uh, questions are related with which subject. So, yeah, it's up to you. Thank you. Excellent. Um, that covers the questions that we have coming in now. And uh, I think we've covered all the material. We're very nice on time, so just three minutes before the end of this session planned. If there's no further questions, I haven't seen one coming in the last minute or so, um, then I'm going to uh, end the presentation. Be aware that you will get a follow-up mail from us uh, probably tomorrow or the day after somewhere, uh, so very shortly with all the detailed information there. And feel free to contact us anyway if you want to have uh, additional information. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, the time to uh, visit us today, to be on board. I thank Claudine for presenting today. And we yeah. hope to meet you soon again on another session. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for you attending. Much. Thank you for attending. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.